Father, we thank God for this blessed opportunity, and He will fix it after a while. Now, if He's going to fix it, don't you try to be ahead of it, but you let Him do the fixing. Sometimes we ask the question, God, you taking a little too long. Why you ain't come yet? But when he going to fix it, it requires you to be patient. David said, I patiently waited on the Lord. He delivered me from all my like trouble. Am I right about it? And if he did it for David, he'll do it for you too. Amen, I know he will. Amen. Are you down? Yes. Judges 10. Yes. We're going to begin at verse number 10. You stand with me. And it reads, And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God, and also served Baal. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, the Zanians also, and the uh, Amalekites and the Midianites did oppress you? And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet, good grace, ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Go cry unto the gods which ye have chosen and let them deliver you in the time of your tribulations. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus to expound on your word. And we thank you, God, for this chance and this opportunity. And God, we ask you now just to hide me behind your cross, that they see less of me and more of you. God, we ask you to just take control now. Yes. Let your Holy Spirit prevail. Yes. Oh God, we ask you to anoint us afresh from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes. Anoint your children right now. Yes. Oh God, and as we stand on the wall of this gospel, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor. So neighbor. Oh neighbor. neighbor. Don't complain to me. Don't complain to me. Now the choir just sang a, a very soul stirring song. It had Sister Artist shook up. Right. <laughs> Say, Jesus will fix it. <laughs> After a while. But you know, you got to do some things in order for God to, 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 to expedite the matters in which you are uh, traveling. If, if you're traversing in trouble right now, you, you want God to hurry up and Fix the thing so everything will be all right. But, but, but you better remember something. If you have been hard-headed, stiff-necked, undeserving of his deliverance, you shouldn't expect God to do anything for you. I mean, if you've been treating me bad and nasty and talking about me, stabbing me behind my back, and they want me to do you a favor, you better go complain to somebody else. Come on, somebody. I, I mean, there's no need of you asking no favor of me when you treated me bad. I mean, because if the shoe was on the other foot, you know, and the goal of the rule is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you haven't treated me with kindness, what give you the idea just because I said I'm saved that you're going to come to me crying with your complaints and growing and crying? Don't, don't complain to somebody and don't complain to me. Uh, you better recognize something because when God does something for you, 
first thing you need to do is thank God. A lot of us are so ungrateful. Good rest of the life. You, you know, God can come through and just, just, just make a, a miraculous change in your life. He can come through and do something so spectacular that you don't even have words to describe what he does. And, and you thinking that God owed you what, you what you're getting into, but you ought to thank him anyway. I heard Pastor Paul says, in all things, give thanks. But we, we are selective in our process in thanking God. We, we only thank Him when we think He's done something good for us. We don't thank Him because He puts us in positions and in places that we don't feel we need to be. Uh, Sometimes God does it for our good. And we don't even realize it. And, and we don't thank him for doing that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting to note that, that, that how sometimes he directs your path around trouble. When you wanted to go one way, God sent you another way. And then when you recognize it, you say, Lord, look what happened to so and so and so. If I would have went that way, I might have got caught up in all of that mess. But what did you do? You forgot to thank God. You don't thank him. Huh? But 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 but, <laughs> but we always cry to him and when when God says don't complain to me. And another thing, how often is it that number two, we need to remember God? Sometimes we think that our meager little strength is strong enough to get us through whatever we're going through. We don't need God. God bought us this far. We ought to be able to carry us ourselves a little further. No, 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 no. I'm here to tell you, you need God with you all the time. And it seems like when God is never on your mind is when you get in the most trouble. If you would remember who you belong to. If you would keep that in mind that I am the property of the almighty God. Who is able to subdue all things unto himself. If you would remember that no matter where I'm at. God is always with me. And I thank him for giving me the strength to do what I do. Then you remember God and he's there. And he'll answer all of your requests. But many of us forget. We do. We forget God. Some of us come home sometimes, we're complaining about the job we just did all day. Supervisor just carried us through holy. Y'all know what I'm saying. You come home with a headache. Significant others there wanting something to eat. You're too tired to fix it. House looking just like you left it. And you just sit down and flop. I ain't doing nothing. You haven't given God any kind of <coughs> mindful thinking that it was he who carried you through all the day. You went to work that morning with all the seen dangers and unseen. He carried you through all the day and you get back home where you started from and don't say, Lord, I thank you for carrying me through this day. You don't remember him. We only remember him in our time of need. And you know, come on now, let's be for real. If somebody only used you whenever they felt the need to use you, how would you feel? I know we don't have the mind of God because we cannot think on God's level. But we sometimes, us humans, use him like we want to use him. We pick him up when it's convenient for us and then put him down when it's inconvenient. We only pick him up when we think the devil is on our trail. We only pick him up when we think bad things are happening. You better remember him all the time. How great is our God? He's great enough to be with us through the night. 
He great enough to be with us all day long. I heard the songwriter say all day and all night. The angels keep watch over me. Huh? You ought to think about that. And remember God always. Because it is he who give you the extra uh, uh, strength and give you the, the extremities to move about and have exceeding movement in your varying extremities. But us, we don't remember him. We just get up out of bed, don't thank him. Go in, sit down, don't say our blessings, just start eating. We don't thank him for another day. We don't remember him anything. Get too tired to pray. Just lay down. Be like that man was. His prayer was too late. Lay down and go to sleep and then don't wake up. But you need to remember God all the way. And number three. You need to praise God. Praise him. Through all my troubles. David said I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You don't have time to backlash on somebody. You don't have time to just talk about this and that and all the other things if you're continually praising God. Amen. If you continue to give him the glory and the praise that he so rightly deserved, you won't have time to have all those awful thoughts in your mind that the devil plant. You, you, you know what they say, don't you? I don't mind is the devil workshop. Amen. I don't know how true that is. God gives us choices. It is up to, it's up to us to choose. But I'm so glad sometimes as the Sunday school lesson said today, he has a change of plan. Because if I were to do what I want to do all the time, good gracious of life. Woo! I might be in some trouble, Deacon McCray. <laughs> I, I, I suspect I'd be in a lot of trouble. But when I do what God has planned for my life, by first seeking him for guidance. Proverbs tell us to seek ye what? First. You seek God first and then he will what? Direct your path. Huh? And then Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things that you want will be added unto you. But we want the things first before we want God. But if we go about praising God, we will see that we won't have a right or a need to complain. Huh? Look what happened in the scriptures here. The children of Israel had mingled and co-mingled with other folk. They had gotten to the point that they had become so relaxed in their way of living that they decided to just start worshiping the other folk God. They had forgotten the fact that God said, I'll have no other God before me. You're my children, and I'm your God. They forgot that. But when they started commingling and marrying and living with these other folk, they began to, to realize that they had forgotten all about God. <clears throat> and then when they started getting in trouble, they started to cry unto the Lord. Started reminding him of what they've done. Have any of us ever done that? Come on now. Uh, you, you cry, you pray to the Lord and remind him of what you've done. When it should have been, you should have faced him first and let him direct your path and everything would have been all right. But they started crying unto the Lord saying, we have sinned against you. Huh? Then they said, uh, they gave him two reasons here. Because we have forsaken you, number one. In other words, they forgot all about God. They forgot all about how he had brought them out of Egypt. They forgot all about the wars that they had won. They forgot all about the trials that they had already came through. Some of us go through so many things. And we look back and wonder how we got through. But what we need to realize is that it is God who gives us the strength. It is God that put his protective angels around us. 
while we may not be able to physically see his protection it's God that wraps us up in his love little children God has a desire for you to mature he has a desire for you to reach your potential you don't see the protection that is there but it's already there the problem with us human infinite, uh, just shortcoming beings is that we forget about who our protector is most of the time we think that it's Mr. 38 if we can get Mr. 38 in our pocket with his seven brothers we feel we got it made or if we can get Mr. Hawkbeard to just flip his blade I can work magic by carving what I want but it's not those things that will protect you it's God everlasting love that he wraps around each and every one of us the children of Israel reminded God that no we forgot about you we have forsaken you and now we know that we took and served Balaam and you told us not to serve anybody else have I got a witness has somebody forsaken their God and decided to serve somebody else you better be careful because when time of trouble comes and it gets too hard for you to bear you start down on your knees and begin to cry out to God you might hear in the small period of the night saying to you don't complain to me when I was there for you I held you up in the time of trouble when I was there for you when you didn't have I was right there. Yes, I was. When bills were due and you didn't know how you were going to make it through, I was right there for you. But now you seem to have come out out of the darkness. See your way through a little bit. You've gotten all about me. Won't give me thanks. Forgot about me. Won't give me any praise. The children of Israel found out that God's love. Yeah, while it may be an everlasting love, sometimes God will say no. Am I right about it? How many times have we wanted to do something? Seemed like it didn't come through. And God said no. When they went down and began to cry, yes they did, and God told them, ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Isn't it bad to know that when I'm sick, he refused to heal me? Who can I turn to? To get my strength, if God says, He tell me no, don't complain to me, but go to whatever it is that you trusted in. Go to and cry to that God that you've been serving. Go and cry unto that God that you have chosen. know that when you get down on your knees and pray to God and ask for deliverance and you don't get no answer, trouble start coming in from all different directions, come from the front, come from the back, come from your left and from your right. 
Paul say? Yeah. Even when I would do good, evil is present on every side.
y'all remember him and give him praise yes. for things being well as they are. Yes. Are you all aware that there's a rumor of war even right now yes. with Russia yes. in the Ukrainian province? Yes. Are you a, a really aware of how many people in North Carolina have died from the flu? Yes. Are you aware of that? Yet God has given you strength. He's given you some help. And we won't even say thank you. But every day we wake up, we got a complaint. We're not glad about seeing the sunlight. We always got a complaint. This is wrong. The dad is wrong. Nothing is never right. But God said, I give you my only son who died on the cross. Gave all he had just for you. Bad your sins. Count to the grave. But early on Sunday morning, he took off the grave clothes. Walked out of God's earth. And now, he's sitting there making petitions for us. And I thank him. I, I don't know about you. I try not to complain. I try not to complain. Yes, because I, I'm like the songs writer says, uh, when all of my good days outweigh my bad days, I won't complain. I, I, I don't know about you, but God been too good to me. Even in my darkest hour, he's been good. When I thought I didn't have no friends, God was still good. When I thought it was all over, he was right there. Let me know. I ain't got no right to complain. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I when I look around and I think things over. Thank you. 
At this time, we open the doors of the church. And when somebody comes to you tomorrow and they start complaining about this and about that, just tell them, don't complain to me. I got some of my own. But you ought to give God some thanks and give him some glory. For how good he's been. As the choir sang, when you stand on your feet, would there be one who asks you to come now?